Well, it's time for another episode of Young Justice Phantoms. This week's episode is entitled Tag Yadare, Tag Yada Er, or Get Ready. A continuation of the Sentinels of Magic arc, we are three chapters in, and more questions are being brought up as well as some really interesting Young Justice Earth 16 history. Let's take a couple minutes to do a full review and recap, spoilers abound, and talk about this week's excellent episode. Now, before we dive in, though, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button and ring the bell for all the updates. Also, the huge giveaway. We got a PlayStation 5 to give away at 25,000 subscribers. All you need to do to get in on our giveaway is be a subscriber and leave us a comment. Also, while you're at it, make sure you check out that free week of Skillshare down below. It's a spectacular way to develop all of your superhero skills. For that never-ending war on crime, all why not diving too deep into your pocket. Plus, it really does help the channel, so we really appreciate it. Well, we're about to dig into another episode of Young Justice. This week's episode, titled properly, is called Get Ready. And a lot of people need to prove whether they are actually ready or not. Now, this is a continuation of the Sentinels of Magic story arc, which is set to run through episode 13, which is the mid-season break. Now, I have to say, this was another great episode, with another massive Earth-16 history lesson, and some serious character development for all the apprentices. Let's focus on that history lesson first. With the appearance of Clarion on Earth, the Lords of Order have decided to go a different direction, and instead of bringing themselves there, they are empowering an agent. But as we know, Clarion's destruction of Atlantis proved to them that this is a bit of a folly. Now we pick up this episode following Vandal Savage, now known as Marduk, in the rise of Babylon. And quite honestly, he has some pretty normal historical issues with his generals. Being the king's not easy. Now eventually, Clarion enters the scene and offers to help. Savage, thinking he may have some level of control over Clarion, wrong again, brings in Starro to quote unquote help. If you know anything about Starro, you know it's anything but help. And eventually, Marduk, as well as his son Nabu, have to face Starro themselves. Now, they do defeat Starro, but it cost him his son Nabu, who falls in the battle. Now, the Lords of Order are actually watching all of this and take a bit of initiative. They turn Marduk's son, they turn Marduk's son into something more than an agent of order. They turn him into a literal lord of order. And they create the helmet of fate as his anchor on the mortal plane. Now they mention this in that episode, so I have to wonder if that's going to come up before the end of the storyline. It's the first time I've heard it mentioned as his anchor. The history lesson is still clearly not complete, but we're getting this chapter by chapter basis every week and I think we've got a couple of more interesting details this week, plus a little background on where Dr. Fate comes from and why he wasn't there in the beginning. They chose agents instead of sending actual Lords of Order and that proved to be a mistake. Now the primary storyline picks up after the battle between Clarion and Child and everybody is proverbially licking their wounds. Satana and her team head off to see Dr. Fade, while Jason Blood and the Phantom Stranger go for some other magical backup. Quite honestly, I'm wondering what magical characters from the DC Universe we're going to see here, and I can't be the only person hoping for John Constantine. Now, when they arrive at the Tower of Fate, they are not very welcome by Nabu. When Satana offers her help, as well as the help of her team, Nabu basically laughs it off, and he's going to test each member of Zatanna's team to prove his point. Now, each member of her team actually faces their own trial, and you really get to see some development for each one of these characters. I actually hope Greg Wiseman and his team have some plans for these characters, because we really got to know them in this episode. Tracy 13 has to face her own doubts and insecurities as a member of the team, a student, and more importantly, her own doubts about her own magic. The urban and bad luck magic aspects are something that's very different and she is very self-conscious. Khalid, on the other hand, faces an identity crisis. Is he a doctor? Is he a magician? Or is he a Muslim? And how do all these fit together? He is ultimately faced with a choice and he really doesn't know which one he is. He is literally drowning in his own doubts and figuratively all of these aspects of his heritage are at stake. But Mary, well, that was wow. We finally see Sergeant Marvel of Earth-16, Mary's other form, 
when we actually find out why she doesn't transform anymore. After using her powers to save a younger version of herself, the little girl actually turns into Lieutenant Marble and commences to whipping up on Mary. Now she wants Mary to say the word and re-embrace the power. The power of Shazam apparently corrupted her and turned her very Black Adam-like. They all eventually do find their inner voices and prove that they are ready. Tracy lives with these fears daily and she defeats them daily. Khalid embraces all the aspects of who he is, all the parts, and he proves that he is ready to face the world as himself. Mary is literally an addiction survivor. She was addicted to power, and she remembers how she defeated it the first time. It appears she actually gave up the power of being Sergeant Marvel because it was consuming her, and she knows she can be even more by embracing herself. Well, after that little pep talk from Billy Batson. Now, even after their success here, it doesn't seem to matter to Dr. Fate. He is convinced to let Chaos fight Chaos and just pick up the pieces. But, quite honestly, Naboo's internal dialogue with Satara here is pretty amazing. Fate is actually demonstrating the possible stagnation that order can evolve to. His refusal to make a decision and just letting things be will cause great harm and chaos if he does nothing. Satara's speech convincing him of the power of the duality of the host and, more importantly, Faith of all kinds was something pretty special to the show, and it actually worked. Dr. Fate can be quite a jerk, but he actually listens and decides to embrace the help Zatanna is offering. Also, seeing Zatara again was pretty great. And I'm hopeful a reunion is imminent. Now, about this time, Clarion shows up at the tower, and this is the shocking moment of the episode. Almost immediately after Clarion shows up, Child and Flaw also appear, and we have something quite unexpected. The death of Tikal. Flaw killing Tikal and Clarion's banishment is quite shocking. I mean, I love Tikal, and he was caught totally off guard. I'm not sure if he's dead dead or will return if Clarion does, but it was brutal. Flaw makes absolute short work of Clarion's pussycat, and it was pretty shocking and very violent. Child continues to demonstrate how powerful she really is, and it's becoming more and more concerning. Now we got two other minor updates this week that I thought are pretty important. First, the downside. Garfield is still spiraling, and clearly the drug problem is now officially a big issue. The seeds are more than planted now, and Garfield is full-on broken level of depression. The drug addiction is in full swing, and we are seeing the impact of that him on mentally when dealing with other team members. I suspect this is about to come to a head, probably at that mid-season break, and I fear it's going to be bad news. And then there's the magic bus. We talked about it a couple of days ago, there's a link down below. If that credit scene isn't a clue, I don't know what is. They are clearly trapped in some kind of loop or magical highway, and they can't escape. I'm not sure who or what put them there, but seeing this in the third episode in a row, it seems to me we are about to find out something. Some interesting views out the window with the bus too if you pay close attention. One of them appears to be Apocalypse, the other one actually looks like a DNA structure like inside a cell, and finally one of them really seemed to be the source wall, which would be very interesting. All in all, I'm going to give this episode an 8.5 out of 10. The death of Teagle alone gave me that oh my god moment, but the team being tested, especially Mary, was something that was highly entertaining. The animation, sound, and voice all continue to be really good, and the writing in these episodes tying them all together in these arcs has been a ton of fun, and I can't wait to see where this takes us. Who are going to be the rest of these magical characters? The Phantom Stranger and Jason Blood, Winter Recruit. What do you guys think? Did you like this week's episode of Young Justice? And what other unseen magical character are you expecting to show up as backup with Jason Blood and the Phantom Stranger? Sound off in the comments below. If you like this video, make sure you press like, click subscribe, and if you don't ring that bell, you're not going to get any updates. Peace.